Riverside Plaza is an outdoor mall in Riverside, California that opened in 1956. If you've clicked onto this video, then you know what today is. It's Monday, 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 Mall Madness. Every Monday I'll be releasing a new video on a defunct or maybe not so defunct mall and its history. Make sure you stick around at the very end of the videos. I'd like to see if you, the viewer, are paying attention. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you get notified of my latest mall video, defunct store, or my throwback Thursday videos. Leave a suggestion or a comment for a future video. Thanks. Riverside County's first shopping mall was built on a 47-acre tract located 47 miles southeast of central Los Angeles in the Magnolia Avenue district of Riverside. Riverside Plaza is a 475,000 square foot outdoor mall. The plaza opened in stages between 1956 and 1957 and was Riverside's first major move into suburbanization. It created a new central location with lots of parking at a time when people started to drive everywhere. Developed by Riverside's Hears Associates, the open-air plaza drew shoppers away from downtown with a Jetson-like sign and plenty of parking. One of the first operational stores at the Riverside Plaza was a Mayfair Market Grocery, opened for business on June 28, 1956. A mall-wide dedication was held on November 11th of the same year, with 38 stores in operation. The mall would eventually contain 53. Charter tenants included W.T. Grant, Learner Shops, Vincent's Drugs, Mode O'Day Frock Shop, Foreman and Clark, Tom McCann Shoes, Baker Shoes, and an F.W. Woolworths Five and Dime. The new shopping mall brought about changes to the surrounding areas. The Wood Streets neighborhood blossomed as the network of freeways grew. Plans had been announced for a two-level, 115,000 square foot San Bernardino-based Harris Company in early 1956. The California Contemporary department store was officially dedicated on September 30th, 1957. A Builders Emporium, which was added to the east side of the Riverside Plaza, welcomed its first customers in October of 1957. Harris, which encompassed a total of 200,000 square feet on four levels, had only used two when the store opened. In June of 1963, it began to utilize a third floor and now encompassed a 165,000 square feet of shopping area. A one-level 83,200-square-foot W.T. Grant was dedicated on October 5, 1966. A 26,000-square-foot Vaughn Supermarket was also built, which opened for business in June of 1967. Riverside Plaza did not have a bona fide retail rival until October of 1970 when Tyler Mall, which was four and a half miles southwest in Riverside, was completed. The Grant Store was converted to a Grant City in 1973 and it closed in 1975. Montgomery Ward assumed the store space soon after. Work on a $30 million mall renovation commenced in December of 1983. Courts and concourses were enclosed. The Ward store was renovated and expanded into an adjacent mall space. 40,000 square feet of retail area was added to the mall. When the mall was enclosed in the mid-1980s, the store expanded. It took in space previously occupied by the Builders Emporium, 
which had closed in 1980. Inline stores such as Radio Shack, Plaza Hairstyling, and a Shirt Shack were relocated. Sports Country, Limited, The Warehouse Records, and Allendale's Baby News were enlarged, and an international food court was also installed. Revitalized Riverside Plaza was rededicated on November 3rd, 1984. The shopping facility now encompassed approximately 632,000 leasable square feet. The enclosed version of Riverside Plaza was soon to encounter new retail rivals. Marino Valley Mall, six and a half miles southeast in Marino Valley, was dedicated in 1992. Ontario Mills, 12 miles northwest in Ontario, opened in 1996. And of course, there was Tyler Mall, literally four miles down the freeway. By this time, Riverside Plaza was in a downward spiral. The $100 million expansion of the Tyler Mall in 1999 to add a second level of stores, Nordstrom, a parking structure, a fancy name, Galleria at Tyler, had some saying the plaza's days were numbered. A demalling redevelopment had been announced but proved difficult to initiate. The renovation was initially held up by the complicated multiple ownership structure of the mall. Several tenants also objected to any modification of the existing building. The plan was to remove the indoor mall and make it an outdoor venue once again. The Harris chain was bought and co-branded by Fresno-based Gottschalks in 1998. The store was closed. and reopened as Harris Gottschalks. The store's moniker was shortened to simply Gottschalks in the early 2000s. After a long period of decline, Montgomery Ward's remaining 254 stores were closed in March of 2001. Ward's demise was an additional obstacle to the reinvention of the Riverside Plaza. Its developers, the Newport Beach-based Kinney Company, moved quickly to acquire the now vacant store. Meanwhile, Krikorian Theaters had signed on to build and operate a megaplex cinema at the redeveloped Riverside Plaza. This agreement was terminated. Signature Theaters came on board as a feature cinema operator in July of 2003. A lawsuit was filed by Krikorian. Undaunted, the Kinney Company proceeded with the mall redevelopment. Demolition got underway in June of 2003. The demalling was done in segments with stores remaining open for business during the reconstruction. The first new Riverside Plaza tenants, Save on Drugs and Trader Joe's, were completed in late 2003. The eastern section of the new Riverside Plaza Lifestyle Center debuted in late 2004. It was composed of an entertainment district, a fashion district, neighborhood district, and food court, all traversed by a main street. In addition to Gottschalks, the new shopping hub featured Island's Restaurant, Uka Japanese Restaurant, California Pizza Kitchen, Citrus City Grill, Party America, a Borders Book, and a Vaughn's Supermarket. This store welcomed its first shoppers on November 3, 2004. The final section of Riverside Plaza, a western store block, or orchard shops, was completed two years later. El Torito Mexican Grill welcomed its first diners in August of 2006. When all the construction dust settled, the redevelopment had cost over $80 million, and that's not including the legal fees pertaining to the Krikorian litigation. The 2009 bankruptcy of Gottschalks resulted in the Riverside Plaza store closing in July of 2009. A two-level Los Angeles-based Forever 21 opened in a portion of the store space on August 15, 2009. This store was shuttered on January 27, 2013. Another vacancy was created with the September 2011 shuttering of Borders Books. Its space was renovated into a shopping center's second Forever 21 location. This one-level store welcomed its first shoppers on August 3, 2013. 
a joint venture of the Phoenix-based Vestar Development Company and Swiss-based UBS Global Asset Management, acquired Riverside Plaza in September of 2012. Vestar, who manages the complex, performed a $12 million facelift of the property in the following year. Now entirely vacant, the Harris Building was divided into five tenant spaces, including a 41,000 square foot Nordstrom Rack, a 20,000 square foot Marshalls, a 20,000 square foot Joanne's Fabric. Nordstrom Rack opened for business on April 3rd, 2014, with Marshalls and Joanne Operations debuting on May 15th and May 20th, respectively. An aerial plan of Riverside Plaza shows five structures left standing when the rest of the mall was knocked down. These are surrounded in blue. Today's Lifestyle Center encompasses approximately 475,000 leasable square feet. It contains 52 store spaces. There are also nine freestanding stores. Congratulations, you made it this far into the video. When I find you, pop quiz, hot shot. So let's see how close you were paying attention to my video. So how many anchor stores closed in this mall? So if your answer was four, give yourself a hand. You were paying attention. Thanks for watching. So what do you remember about this mall? Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment or a suggestion for a mall from your childhood, or how about your favorite mall? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the E Chang channel.